Got another structure determination question here using combine techniques. So I've put a link to the question in the description of the video. So click on that, have a go, and then play on for the answers. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is work out the empirical formula. So you can see I've done that there. So that's given us an empirical formula of C6H9NO2. And then if we work out the MR of that, it actually comes out at that one, two, seven. And you can see from the molecular ion peak, uh, which is the MR of the molecule, it's got an M over Z value of one, two, seven. So that is the MR. And so therefore the molecular formula is the same. So moving on to the infrared spectrum, this is gonna show us the functional groups in the molecule. First place I always look is around about the 3000 mark. So something very broad between say two and a half and three, three. So it would kind of look like that. That would indicate a COOH. Well, we haven't got that. So I'm just gonna write here, no COOH. Um, OH group, so alcohol would be sort of around about here. So it starts just above 3000, it goes up to about three and a half. So we haven't got that either, so no OH. And you can see we've got nitrogen in the molecular formula. So things like amines, they've got NH groups in. Well, they would be sort of around about here as well. And we haven't got that. So we've no um, NH either. So it's worth writing down what you haven't got as well as what you have got, just as you gather your thoughts. The other place I would look is here about 1700 you can see there's a definite absorption there so that's a classic c double bond or now there's something here which is interesting um that's actually if you go to your data sheet that's a c triple bond n so we can kind of make a inference from that that this molecule j could be a nitrile Okay, so we'll sort of have that at the back of our mind as we go into the rest of the analysis. Okay, so for the proton NMR spectrum, what I'm going to do is just take each um, signal in turn and do the same treatment on it. So I'm going to say what environment we've got from the shift value. I'm going to say what kind of signal it is. So is it a singlet, doublet, triplet, quartet? What does that mean? So in other words, what's adjacent to that? And the area values, which are the numbers next to the peaks, that's telling me the number of protons in the environment. And you'll notice, before I start here, if you add up the ratio, the integration values, the area values, so two, four, six, so nine, if you go to the molecular formula, you've got H9 there. So these are the actual number of hydrogens in this molecule. Sometimes the ratios, so you might be twice as many in the actual molecule or three times as many. These are the actual numbers because the area values add up to the hydrogens in the actual molecule. So that's quite in, uh, useful to know. Okay, so we'll start with this signal at 4.2, 4.3. I've highlighted it yellow because when I come to coming up with the final structure, I'll um, sort of highlight those protons in that colour. So this environment is HC single bond O. And we've got a triplet. So what that means is there's an adjacent CH2 group to the protons causing this signal. We've got an area of two. And that means that there are two protons causing the signal. So therefore we have got a CH2 causing this signal okay so what I'm going to do now is just sketch up what that little part of the molecule is going to look like okay so there it is there so it's the H to C to O environment so these have caused that signal there's two of them so area two they're adjacent to CH2 and that's given us the triplet so we now know that we've got this feature in our molecule so moving on to the peak at just below um, 3 ppm. So I've highlighted that one orange. What kind of environment's that? It's H to C to C double bond O. It's a quartet. 
Therefore, there's an adjacent CH3, area 2, therefore, it's a CH2 that's causing this signal. Okay, so H to C to C double bond door, two in the environment from the two area and adjacent to a CH3, giving us the quartet. So now I'm thinking, because we've got the C double bond door and the C single bond door, I'm now thinking it's an ester. Okay, so moving on to this one here at sort of 1.6, 1.7, We've got, that's an HCR environment. It's a triplet. Therefore, there's an adjacent CH2. And it's area 2. Therefore, it's a CH2 that's causing this. So, that kind of ties in with this here, doesn't it? So, we've got... Um, Two in the environment adjacent to two. So if I just highlight those in pink, I'm thinking that's um, that signal there is caused by those two protons. And then the final signal, the one I've done in green there, again it's uh, HCR because of its shift value. Another triplet, therefore adjacent CH2. Area 3 now, therefore it's being caused by a CH3 group. So to me, that's looking like it's those there. Because they are in the HCR environment, they're adjacent to 2, but there's 3 in the environment. So what I'll do now is just put that together. It's obviously not the final molecule see what we've got left and then see what kind of springs to mind from that. Okay, so that's what we've got so far. So it's looking like it's an ester. And then I've counted up how many carbons, hydrogens and oxygens we've got, that C5H9O2. So if we go to the molecular formula, so we're a carbon down and we're a nitrogen down, but we did say that we've got this signal here in the um, infrared spectrum that's due to a CN, so it looks like that's the molecule, and that is the answer.